So we're going to do a urine specimen from a Foley catheter. Um, it can be called uh, sometimes an MSU, um, or you might uh, see it ordered as urine for CNS, which stands for culture and sensitivity. So we're essentially checking um, if this client has an infection um, in their urine. In the case of a patient who has a Foley catheter, again, if they do, if we do suspect an infection um, based on the CAUTI, uh, C-A-U-T-I guidelines uh, or catheter associated UTI guidelines, you, you would have actually wanted to change the whole system before collecting that sample if they still required a Foley catheter just to make sure um, if we do suspect there's an infection that they're getting a new sterile catheter um, inserted. So, um, this uh, test is sort of frequently referred to as CNS, um, culture and sensitivity, like I said. So it tests for what bug is in the urine, and then the sensitivity por part or portion um, is testing what antibiotics it would be susceptible to. Um, though on the requisitions now from um, clinical microbiology, it's no longer referred to as CNS, um, and it's a culture for aerobic bacteria. So you might hear kind of um, both those terms sort of being used or see them, um, but just so you're kind of aware. So the supplies you want um, for doing this, collecting this um, sterile specimen um, from a catheter, um, you're gonna want your sterile specimen urine container, which looks like this, the orange top tube. This one's obviously been used bef before because it's lab, but you would want one that hasn't been used, so where the sterile seal hasn't been broken there. Um, we are going to open it, though, of course, here. Um, you're going to want some forceps, so they kind of look like scissors, but they're um, flat edge, so they're forceps, because we're actually going to kink off uh, the tubing here um, a couple centimeters down from the port um, so that urine can actually collect in the port here. And we already actually have some urine collecting in the port from our patient, um, but you're going to want to actually clamp it off. You're also going to want a new sterile Luralox syringe. So we grabbed a 10 cc because we only need about three to five mLs of urine. So you want to get a new sterile Luralox syringe. Uh, you want to have alcohol swabs, and then you also want to have gloves, of course. So we'll just prep our supplies here. Um, we're going to clean our hands. We're starting. So when you start, um, the first thing you're going to do is actually swab the port because um, that's where we're going to hook up our Lurlock syringe. So we're going to swab that port for 30 seconds um, and then let it dry. And again, you don't want to disconnect the system here, right? Um, you can probably see why don't we just pull that apart and put the tubing or put the catheter into our sterile specimen container. Um, but we want to keep a closed system as much as we possibly can with a Foley catheter because opening up the system, um, there's potential for introduction of um, microorganisms. So we'll clean that really well. Say that was 30 seconds. And um, we're going to let it dry again. We're going to open our Luralox syringe. Um, a Luralox is the only one that will hook onto there. And you don't want to use a needle because, again, um, needle is systems when available are ideal so that you don't poke yourself. So we're just going to kind of stabilize the tubing here. Um, once we, we want to make sure that we have urine collecting. It usually isn't that fast. You may have to wait a couple minutes after clamping um, before you clean and are kind of ready to go. Um, but we're going to hook this up. So you just have to press down and twist and it hooks up there to your catheter and then you can withdraw the urine. So again, for this um, test, the, the lab um, requested that they only need about three to five mLs, but I had about nine in there, so that's fine to send a little bit of excess. I'm gonna carefully open my sterile container, my new sterile container, and put the cap down this way um, so that I'm not contaminating the inside of the cap. And I'm going to put my urine carefully into the container and this uh, syringe will get thrown out here and we'll recap again carefully. Um, an important piece, don't forget to unclamp the Foley. Um, that could be a problem and will cause an occlusion um, and they can't freely drain urine after that. So make sure you unclamp the catheter um, 
And then also we're going to be sending this off to the lab. So you want to make sure you have the correct requisition um, and that you also label the specimen container with the patient's name and information. You'll do the same, I'll just show you, on the applicable requisition. And you'll also check off uh, where the sample came from and what you're testing it for. Um, so these can be found online um, with specific instructions and it even often shows a picture of what container um, it wants you to draw from. So this one we're doing a bacterial culture aerobic. So that's what we're going to check off under urinary tract specimen. And again, making sure we have our patient information at the top and our patient information on the container. It will go into a, a typically a Ziploc bag with a slip at the front where the rec can go and they get sent off together. Okay, so another type or way of collecting urine, um, if your client does not have a Foley catheter in, um, is an, also called an MSU or midstream urine. Um, so uh, the supplies you're gonna need for it, uh, we'll go over, it's pretty much right here. So you're gonna want that sterile specimen, urine specimen cup. Um, and again, you wanna make sure it's a new one that hasn't been opened before. So the um, sterile sticker here will not have been broken. Um, so we have our sterile urine specimen that's not been used um, and then personal cleansing towels or um, something like that that your facility has. Um, you're going to, depending on the situation with the patient, you're either going to help them do peri care prior or ask them to perform peri care prior. Um, and then the instructions you're going to give them are um, they can sit on the toilet um, or commode, etc. Um, and they're going to actually clean the area. So clean the same way that we do pericare or have gone over pericare for males from the meatus up towards the glands. Um, and for a female, um, the, the outer labia first and then the center last. Um, and then they're going to actually initiate a stream of urine, so sort of start peeing, um, and then sort of um, midstream, and hence the, the name MSU, midstream urine, they're going to pass this um, specimen cup into the stream and collect um, about 30 to 60 mLs of urine for that one. Um, so um, they, they can then finish their, their void. Um, and you want to also be careful or mention to them to be careful about the cap, not to touch the inside of the container or the inside of the cap. And when they do put the cap down, they can put it down on the sink or a, a countertop um, this way so that the top is facing up. Um, they can recap it when they're done and dry off the sides if there's any urine that got on the sides. Um, and then again, they will uh, give it to you. You can wear gloves and put their name and information on it and make sure the same information is on the correct rec that you're sending the, the sample for. So another type of um, urine specimen collection you may uh, see or hear about or have ordered by a physician is called a UA or urinalysis. Um, sometimes it's called a random um, specimen, but more often referred to as that UA or urinalysis. Um, and this can be more of a, a clean catch, if you will. So it doesn't necessarily need to follow those same um, sterile principles that we went through with the MSU um, collection. So that can mean that it can come from a, a Foley bag, but ultimately if, if your patient does have a Foley, you may as well do it the, the cleaner way um, where you're cleaning off the port, et cetera, um, that we went over. Um, it can also be a, a midstream urine where the, the client's um, passing it into their stream of urine that they've initiated, um, or it could also come from, say, a bedpan or a hat collection in the toilet. Um, so with this test, um, urinalysis will test the urine for um, pH. So your urine, you do want it to be um, slightly acidic, so it helps kind of keep away um, bacteria. It will test for protein in the urine. So we don't want to see excess amounts of protein in the urine because that can um, sort of mean or allude that there's kidney damage possibly going on or um, something that needs to kind of be further uh, tested. So it also tests for glucose, which is, again, sugar in the urine. So um, in the case of someone who's diabetic, you may see that. Um, another thing it tests for is ketones. So um, you may see ketones, again, in poorly controlled diabet diabetic situations, um, but also you may see it in certain um, cases of starvation, um, those ketones breaking down. 
Um, you may also see blood on the um, urinalysis. So generally, we don't want to see blood. Um, you, you can, again, in the case of um, trauma to the, to the general area or um, kidney damage, um, menstruation may also um, cause blood to show up in the urine. Um, and then finally, a test for specific gravity. So the concentration of your urine, how dilute or heavily concentrated is it? And that might give us some cues about the hydration status of our patient or the fluid status of our patient. So a urinalysis can be a pretty useful uh, test or screen. Um, it, it used to commonly be done sort of on the unit um, where the nurse would collect the, the sample, the ways that we talked about, the urine sample, and then actually use what's called a dipstick or a reagent strip. So you may actually use here, that term being used is um, to perform a dipstick test. Um, it's a little less common, like I said, to actually do the dipstick version of it. Um, as you can probably imagine, because different people may sort of interpret the, the test result a little bit differently. Um, so now what's more common is actually sending the urinalysis to the lab. So sending it in the um, specimen bottle and then checking off the urinalysis at the bottom here, um, that that's what you're testing for. Um, I should also mention that a urinalysis you can actually add micro to, so that checks for um, cell casts and white blood cells, so kind of gives us a picture of a possible infection um, in the, that patient as well. So I'll just show an example of if you were doing the dipstick, which you would be doing. So we'll grab some gloves. And you'd want to have a, a tissue nearby too. Um, for afterwards, I'm going to pull out a reagent strip. So we just need one and recap. I'm going to open our specimen here and we're going to dip it. And make sure you submerge all of the test strips. Um, and then if you're comparing it to here, it actually tells you where to actually hold the strip handle, and then you can compare it to the results here. So we can see um, they have a pH of about six, a glucose of five, um, no ketones or normal for ketones, negative for leukocytes, um, negative for nitrates, negative for protein, and negative for blood. So um, that's kind of the idea, and then again, that interpretation is possibly a little bit um, subjective. So more often than the dipstick um, on the unit, you'll see it being sent off. Um, but you may still see this in some areas um, or some areas that don't have access to a lab um, as readily. So this would just get thrown out once you've done your test interpretation, documented and informed the um, physician as needed. So another type of um, urine collection that you may see uh, is a timed urine specimen collection. Um, it's a test done to, it can be used for a number of different things to assess kidney function, um, protein, creatinine, clearance, hormones, etc. different reasons. Um, but you may see it um, ordered, sometimes it's ordered as a 24-hour urine collection. Um, so hence, uh, this is a larger container um, and it may take multiple containers to fill. This type of collection doesn't have to be sterile. It can just be um, caught clean, say from the Foley bag um, or from the patient voiding into a hat inside the commode chair or inside the toilet, and then it's transferred into one of these larger containers. Um, so again, it doesn't have to be sterile, but it does need to be free of contaminants such as toilet paper or fecal matter, et cetera. It needs to be cle clean of those, so we just want the urine. Um, if a urine, say for example, is missed, say the person goes to the washroom, forgets that they're on a timed um, urine specimen collection, um, and they flush it down the toilet, the collection actually has to start all over again the following day. It's usually, again, like I said, regimented for a period of 24 hours. So typically from 0600 to 0600 the next day um, is when we, when we do it. So again, you're, you're collecting that urine and then transferring it um, from a graduate, via graduate into one of these containers. And it may, over the course of that 24 hours, take a container and a half or so or more. Um, 
and that's fine you would just get more but you just want to make sure you communicate with everyone who may be emptying that person's um, catheter or catheter bag or um, commode that we are doing a timed specimen collection so that's it for that one